We're living in chaotic and uncertain times today. No one has to tell us that. Um, we have social and cultural upheaval all around us. We have moral and ethical confusion. We have political and economic unrest. These are difficult times. These are difficult things. This is the stuff of life that we face. And we need help. But we don't need just any help. We need the right kind of help. We need help from God. We need help, though, from a great God, an awesome God, a God who is capable of handling all of these issues and many more. We find <clears throat> this kind of a God in Psalm 139, verses 1 through 18. This is a Psalm of David. And in it, David is going to talk about this God that he serves, the God of the Hebrew people, the God of the Old Testament, uh, the, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I turn your attention to that at this time. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. This God that David speaks about is a God who um, is great, a God who is awesome. And David recognizes various qualities and characteristics of this God um, that help to make him, uh, help to make God be the God that he is. He begins with, you have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out, my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me too lofty for me to attain. 
David talks about God as all-knowing. God knowing everything about him, David. Um, he knows him inside and out. He um, knows when David arises from sleep, when David's walking along the road, when David is involved in the things of life, God knows. He knows the thoughts that David has. They're familiar to him. Before word is on the psalmist tongue, God knows this. And for David, this is such that he is overwhelmed by uh, the magnificence of this. David is awestruck by God's knowledge, not only knowledge of him, but knowledge of everyone and everything, his knowledge of all creation. So the first part of this psalm that's lifted up is that God is all-knowing. Then we move to verses 7 through 12. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night all around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for darkness is as light to you. Not only is God uh, all-knowing, but God is all-present. There is no situation, circumstance, or place that we will ever find ourselves that God is not already present. Um, No matter how dark, No matter how difficult, no matter how challenging, or uh, how fearful the situation, God is present. God is with us. There's something else about that 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 needs to be known. It may be the more of the negative aspect, but there is no place that anyone can flee from God. Even those who do not accept or believe in God desire and, and, and seek to live their own way. There are others who, who seek to run from God, but based on this psalm, there is no running from God. There is no place one can run to that God is not present. And that can be a source of, of strength and a source of comfort to us. He continues on and he says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. The reason this God has all knowledge of us The reason this God is all present with us is because this God is the one who has created us. God is all powerful and all creative. And that begins even from the time of conception. The psalmist recognizes the value that God places on the human life even at the earliest stages of existence. 
One thing that's uh, clear here is the value of the unborn to God because that unborn is a part, special part of God's creation. The psalmist, what the psalmist describes here is not uh, a lifeless, mindless mass of tissue or a blob of jelly-like substance, nor is it um, a part of a woman's body like an appendix or a kidney. It's a completely different person, and it's one created in the image of God. That's the value that God places on the life. Even at conception, it has to be the value that we place on life as well. Not only does God know David's beginning, but he knows David's full future. There's a plan and a purpose for him. Human beings are not accidents by chance. We have been created purposefully by God. And every person is one that we meet is one created in the image of God. And every person we meet is one for whom Christ died. So, in looking at these things, God is all-knowing. God is all-present. God is all-powerful and creative. David is just awestruck by the greatness of God, and so should we. Um, who could wrap their mind around any of this? God's knowledge, uh, God's presence, God's uh, uh, power and creative ability. No one, no one is able to fully comprehend all of that. It's part of what makes him God. So for David, the only appropriate response, when he stops and he thinks about God and God's greatness and God's knowledge and God's presence and God's power. The only appropriate response that David can give is worship and praise. And so it is for us. I commend this God to you and I encourage you along with me to come back to Psalm 139 time and time again verses 1 through 18 as a reminder of who God is and uh, that this is the God that desires to be in a personal relationship with each of us through his son Jesus Christ. Join us next time as we continue with our study of the Psalms.